Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I'm going to show how I made this collage layout in an Alter Children's Board Book. I am not going to slow down and show all the pages right now, because in a few days I'm going to do a, a flip through of the whole book. I only have the covers to finish now, and it'll be done. Today I'm just going to show how I started with this blank board and added layer and layer until I came up with this layout. If you like altered books, journal arts, vintage books, paper, and ephemera, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and be sure and turn on the notifications and you will have more of them in your life. Now let's go alter a book. I do like working in children's board books. I do it quite a bit, but I haven't made a video about one in a couple of years. I don't know why. One of the reasons that I like these is they are easy to find. You don't need a 250 year old book to alter to get started. You can find these in any flea market or thrift store or yard sale and they're cheap. If you're paying more than 50 cents or 50 pence, you're paying too much. So look, just keep, keep moving and look somewhere else. I also like them because if you do look for them, you often find them in fun, interesting shapes that are meant to attract the eyes and hands of little readers to be. I think this one was about a, uh, the moon. And so each board has a kind of a moon shaped feel to it. I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but it's going to be fantastic. And the one that I'm working in today, I was charmed by because it has tabs. And those just gave some interest and a uh, little movement and fun. And I just love tabs. Something that's different in a board book, as opposed to altering a book book is that altering in a book like this, this book has a sewn binding and signatures. That means that it's going to be strong enough that it can chunk up. You can add a lot to it. You can add um, pockets and inside of pockets, you can add treasure and it can just uh, chunk right up. A board book is not going to do that. Not much. This is not sewn. A board book is glued and it's glued to this little piece of paper here. So if I put a lot of stuff in here, it's going to stress that too much. It's going to put a lot of stress on that little piece of paper and it could just come away. And then I will be sad. So, I'm not going to add a lot of paper ephemera to this the way I usually do. In that sense, this is more of an art journal where I just have a beautiful mixed media collage layout. On a lot of these pages, I have started with a gesso or acrylic background. For this last layout, I want to use text to make it look more like a traditional book page. This book is bigger than it looks, so I had to find the biggest paper I had, which is a dictionary page. It's 12 by 10. And uh, what I'm going to do is go around it and use this as a template and measure that and trim it and glue it down. Here are some of the pieces that I am going to work with today. She is from the girl's own paper. 
Uh, that was an English magazine that uh, was published back in the day, and this one is from 1883. I'm also going to be using these characters. They are from a French magazine from 1881 called L'Univers, which means the universe. And originally they were playing bowls on the lawn, but now I've cut them out and I think they're just being nosy parkers, checking out her business. I am going to use some butterflies. These are from a book called 1905. It's called our country's butterflies and moths. I'm going to be trying out some flowers. And these are from coffee table books. And I'm going to be adding, pretty sure I'm going to be adding some birds, a bird. Now, these birds from my collection and they're from a book called Castle's Book of Birds from 1880. It has color plates and it also has some very dramatic black and white ones. If you've seen my collage layouts you know that I love anything with a wing especially old-timey birds. I have made a uh, collection of these. They're printable they're high-res scans, and they are on Etsy. So if you would like to use these in your own work, 25 altogether, the link is in the text below this video. I'm not unhappy with this, if we just were to go with these focal points here. There's plenty of story going on. But, let's see. I'm going to see how she's going to look with some wings that will add wings and it will add a little bit of color to this layout and might explain their extreme curiosity. I actually am happier with the small ones. They're not so overwhelming. They're a little bit more mysterious. It also means that there's a bit of yellow here. So if I was to go with this sharp build Oriole, that would be kind of good. It also looks like he's reading them the riot act. Normally I would not put an image in the middle of a binding but in one of these board books, they're more for fun, they're more art journaling. I go ahead and take a chance. I like this crow a lot because he's doing two things that you don't always find in um, focal points. I like my images to engage with each other across the layout, across the pages. And here, how are you going to get one guy to engage with two separate uh, postures. Well, this is exceptional because his body is facing this slot, but his head is actually turned round to look at her. So he does both. We could put him here. That would look better. That makes a little bit of a perch out of this line in the uh, dictionary text. I like this guy. Visually, he's good, but he's not really adding to the story. Uh, this is a pretty cool toucan. Toucans aren't usually my favorites, but this one is, is very dramatic. And I, I was just thinking, he could actually, if I did go with this, he could be put right there so that he's part of them, part of this, this, this group of, uh, onlookers. And that's not bad. I do like how the flowers look. Uh, again, they're not telling a story really, but as this is an art journal page, it can just be visually pretty and that's good enough. Now I like this flower a lot because 
for some reason, it actually seems as if it's turned like a face that's turned towards her. So it's pretty, but it's also kind of interesting. The flower is also saying, what? what? What's up? Not always easy to get a flower that does that. I like this a lot. And I'm actually very, very tempted to just go with this because that's so pretty and dramatic. But we'll see. I was thinking about putting the crow back because I found this little butterfly. He's actually part of a cigarette card, and um, but he has the similar colors that her wings have. So if I was to put them here, so you have these people, they're curious. We're not quite sure why there's a mystery there. But now look what happens when I just put in this one little element. Okay, he's looking. Now he's not so much looking at her as this butterfly is with her. The wings are similar. And the bird wants to eat the butterfly or follow him. And now his eye is meeting this eye. So they're watching the bird, the, the, the chuff watch the butterfly and they all go back to her. And you know, I'm really tempted by this. I think this page just needed one more thing to make it pop. And I decided to add a border here. This is torn from a sheet of vintage handwritten ledger paper. I just rough tore it to the eye. Now I have a printable scan of this page. It's free. And it's on my website. The link is below the video. So if you like it, go get it. Use it in your own work. I just rough tore this. And I, you can see in here that I'm not placing it right in the middle. There's something called the rule of visual thirds, which says that a piece that is placed at one third on the page or one third down here is more interesting to the eye than here. So I'm going to put that down here on the bottom, about a third of the way from the, the bottom of the page. Now I'm going to add this lady here. Some wings, put her wings back. And then put the crow back here. The, the neighbors here the crow here. I can perch him on one of these ledger lines and then the butterfly here. And I think that makes a very strong, much stronger composition with that little uh, edge there. I'm going to glue that down and be right back. I am very happy with how this layout turned out. I may add some color, some embellishing or mark making. And if I do, you'll be able to see that in a few days when I do a flip through of the finished book. I'm currently working on an online course about how to alter a children's board book, how to prepare the pages, and then different ways that you can use the book itself. In the meantime, if you have any questions or feedback, please let me know in the comments below this video. Also check out the text below this video and find out what's going on here at Book and Paper Arts. Until next week, get up and go make something.